Welcome to the 8th video of the Foundry's Camera Tracker for After Effects 101 training series. In this video we'll be looking at pulling match moves from shots with lens distortion. Now, lens distortion generally occurs near the extremities of the focal range available on variable focal length lenses, but can occur in any shot really. There are two main problems with lens distortion from a match moving point of view. First of all, the changing shape of the features and the changing manner in which they move in areas of lens distortion, which are generally towards the edge of the frame, can throw off the tracking algorithm. Secondly, the different movement in the feature points in these areas, if they've tracked, can result in a solve getting thrown off, since of course it's using the track point's movement to build a model of the world it's in. If that movement starts doing strange things towards the edge of the shot, then that picture of that world is going to be very strange. Now we'll deal with the latter of these two first, using this shot here, which has some light barrel distortion around the edges. First off, we'll pull a track as normal. Because the lens distortion isn't that excessive, the track points won't fall afoul of the features changing shape so much they get dropped. For this shot, I'm using a quick mat to drop out the sky area, since it's so far in the distance any points on it won't be of any use to us. So the track looks pretty good. Before we solve, I'm going to pop my lens distortion type to unknown lens. If you've shot with an anamorphic lens, then toggle this chap here to anamorphic as well. Most circumstances, though, spherical is what you want. And now let's hit solve camera. Right, we've solved. That all looks pretty good. Let's go and take a look at our lens distortion parameters. Now, as you can see, this has been set to 0.3. If you toggle on it, see the full precision, however, you can actually see that quite often there's more information in there than After Effects shows you by default. So bear that in mind when you're looking at small amounts of lens distortion. So what can you do with this estimate now? Well, first of all, you can see if it's sensible by toggling on the Understort parameter down here. This flattens the plate in question, and you can see that it makes lines towards the edge a degree straighter. I've got my mask in the background here, so I'm just going to toggle this chap off. Now, you can work in a flattened world and then crop the frame at the end if you want your final result to be flat. If you want your final result to have the same lens distortion, however, then you need to work slightly differently. What you don't want to do is flatten your plate, work flat, then reintroduce distortion at the end, since this would result in your original plate getting two filter hits, once to flatten and once to re-distort. What you need to do is to keep your original plate distorted by leaving this guy off, work with all these guys to create solids and so forth as usual, and then apply lens distortion to your created areas at the end. In this case, I'm just going to create a solid near the edge over here. Like so. Now what you need to do is pre-compose all these created elements. So go up to layer and pre-compose moving all attributes in to your new pre-composition. Now what you can do is take your original camera tracker, copy it, select your new pre-comp and paste it. Now if you go into your lens distortion twirly and toggle on redistort, this will apply the opposite correction to your newly created objects to make them match up to your background plate. So what about the circumstances where the lens distortion is so bad that the tracking is just rubbish? Well, to solve these sorts of shots, what you need to do is eyeball a correction first manually, then track. To do this, use either After Effects' built-in optics compensation effect, or apply an initial pass of camera tracker, where all you do is toggle the lens distortion to known lens, switch on and distort, then manually set up your lens distortion parameters. Now, add a second pass of camera tracker on top of that, and track. And as before, for any created element, pre-compose them and redistort using a copy and paste of the first camera tracker set to redistort. Finally, there's the intervening circumstances where the lens distortion estimate is bad, but the track points are okay. You can help out here by setting up an initial estimate and then refining it using the camera tracker itself. Essentially, this gives the camera tracker an initial point to minimize the problem from. So if there's multiple possible solutions, it won't pick the wrong one. So to see this, I've basically tracked the same clip again, but in this case I've only tracked 10 frames, i.e. not enough to give us a reliable estimate. If I now solve with unknown lens switched on, you'll see that it gives me a pretty wrong estimate. If I hit OK and then switch on understore here, 
you can see how it's much more curved than it should be. Okay, so in this circumstance, I can set this to refine known lens and type in a rough estimate down here, let's say 0.02, then hit solve again. It'll attempt to calculate that problem from that initial setup for me. If I check in here now, you can see how 0.02 actually wasn't too far off, and we've gone for a small increment on top of that, which if I click underscore, is much closer.